Welcome to the uh, Beyond Normal podcast. Kenny Groom, I'm excited to have Greg Lancet, the owner and founder of 404 uh, Esports, uh, Atlanta's premier esports lounge, where Greg is actually catering to uh, the esports environment and let, creating a uh, safe space for uh, folks during this time to uh, play the games um, that they choose. Thanks for joining us today, uh, Greg. How are you doing? Good, man. I appreciate you having me, man. Looking forward to the conversation. Hope everybody's staying safe out there. Appreciate that. Yes, definitely want to make sure everybody's safe, safe and sound during this pandemic. So I want to, you know, dig right into things. You know, I want to open the floor for you to just, you know, tell us a little bit about your background. I'm from Georgia originally, grew up in Decatur, went to Mercer a couple years, didn't know what I wanted to do, ended up going to the Navy for four years, kind of figure some stuff out, uh, you know, trying to travel the world, get some experience underneath my belt. I was stationed in a bunch of places, mainly West Coast, and deployed once. Uh, went to, like, a bunch of Asian countries, man. I got to see, like, Japan, Thailand, Hong Kong, all that stuff. It's really cool. Moved back here, went to Georgia State, got my degree in middle grades, education, language arts, and social studies. Like, by the time I finished student teaching my, my final year and, like, wrapped up my degree, I realized, like, how – how much I don't like kids. So, <laughs> so I, well, hey, uh, kids these days are, it's not like, you know, when we were in school and for the main part, you know, you had a couple of troublemakers, but it was more like you just did the work, you do what your teacher, you know, instructed, you paid attention in class because if you mess around, you're going to catch that whooping when you got home. But, but now parents are so young, man, they pretty much are kids. So they don't really, they don't really look at it like that. It's kind of like if you, if you got a kid who's, I mean, it's a different subject for a different day, but basically the parents don't really side with teachers anymore. It's, it's really, there's all kind of, all kind of stuff going on with the education system that you see is kind of like, I will not say so much racist, but kind of like a classist a little bit, the way they divide all the kids. But anyways, I didn't want to work for anybody regardless. So, so what happened is we ended up getting into a spot where me and someone else decided we we're going to do our own thing and, and, you know, 404 Esports started its conception around that time. You know, I appreciate you, um, you know, giving that background. Like, you tried the teaching route and you noticed a couple things. What's interesting, right, is that since you're in this, you know, the esports arena, the video game arena now, um, I think when you take a step back, right, kids are spending a lot more time on these games and there's a big debate around, you know, whether or not kids can actually – you know, learn things from the from the games that they have put in front of them. Now, I know that's a hot topic right now, but um, it seems like that that is a um, a way to transition some of those skills that you have because you are still. I'm assuming your clientele is you know s- somewhat on the younger on uh, the younger side in terms of um, you know age group, and you're still interacting with kids just in a different way. Actually, the the age group that comes out here is typically. I'd say the youngest crowd we might get is Thursday night for Smash Ultimate. And even then, though, I mean, most of the younger guys are, like, maybe 18. Got it. And okay. Like, so a lot of them are, like, going to college now. So surprisingly, like, we don't get, like, you know, the crowd that's all playing Fortnite and everything. Like, a lot of those those are, like, the middle high school students. We mainly get, um, you know, 18 to 45-year-olds up in the shop. The reason why is because at 404, we specialize in the fighting games. So there's, there's like different demographics in games for whatever reason. And the fighting game players are, I guess we're being phased out a little bit. You're not seeing too many younger guys join the, what they call the FGC, the fighting game community. Uh, whereas a lot of those players will uh, gravitate more towards like sports games, shooters, and the older crowd, they seem to gravitate more towards the fighting games and the, the Japanese RPGs. So it's kind of it's like divided like that. At the same time, there's, there's always learning going on uh, up there. I mean, because fighting games have some of the biggest events during the course of the year. So, you know, guys will you'll get together for what they call lab sessions where they're pretty much just going over training, going over patch notes. You know, the fighting games are, are interesting as to where they're always evolving. You know, the developers will listen to complaints from the players and they'll release what they call patch notes where they'll go in, they'll edit certain things, they'll fix certain things. They might nerf or buff a character, which is, if anyone listening doesn't know what that means, uh, mm-hmm. if someone's overpowered in a game, then what they'll do is they'll go in and they'll take some take some moves out. They might decrease the amount of damage certain moves do, uh, basically to kind of keep a, maintain a balance within a game. Or they might buff them, where they'll do the complete opposite, make them go stronger for two weeks. 
give them more attacks if they're, they're not fully, you know, capable of competing with the other characters, it seems like. But I always say if something's in the game, you shouldn't complain about it. You should just learn how to deal with it because they wouldn't put it in there if it wasn't – if it couldn't be dealt with. So, but, yeah, there's yeah. definitely there's some kind of learning going on. So I want to take a step back and just dig a little bit into, you know, what sparked the idea for you to – like, you you know, you touched on – um not really wanting to work for anybody, but what sparked the idea around, all right, I need to, you know, you, Greg, you need to start this eSports lounge. First, I'll say when I initially started this, there was myself and another guy who he was only around for, you know, a couple months. And then uh, when we first opened, we weren't, we weren't doing well at all. He just kind of like disappeared. I haven't heard from the dude since uh, we opened March, 2019, March 2nd. And I haven't heard from him since like the third week of March. But, uh, you know, I, I just say that because I don't, I don't want it to seem like it was all my idea, like try to take credit for everything. But going further back, you know, I'll go to MomoCon, which is a big event out here. It's a, it's a big convention that's geared towards, you know, fighting games and anime, cosplay. Same thing with Drag- Dragon Con's a lot bigger because it has a, a wider audience. Dragon Con's, you know, you're, it's not just about the anime. It's not just about the gaming, but it's – you know, it's, it's fandom. It's, you got a lot of Star Wars, all kind of movie, Marvel, all that stuff. So you see a lot more older people that have been going to Dragon Con. MomoCon actually used to be a part of Dragon Con as far as the, the organization members, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I would go to events like that, and there's always gaming sections, uh, like 24 hours open or something like that. That dream hack as well, it was one of those things where I'm like, why can't this be like every day? I, like, I wish something like this was every day. So that was, that's kind of what was part of the inspiration on, on my end for wanting to do 404 esports. I've always tried to keep that in mind. Uh, I want to create like an environment that just, you know, got some neon lights flashing all the time. It's all about like the lighting and just the atmosphere, just people in there having a good time. You want it to feel like an 80s arcade when you step in there. Got like the synth wave playing in the background off the speakers, man. It's, it's mm-hmm. a good time. Yeah, that brings back the nostalgia. I yeah, like yeah, that. for sure, sure. Because like, like I said, man, it's a lot of us. I'm pretty much thirty now, so a lot of us are all older, and you know, just having those, those feelings, that nostalgia, kind of like you know, being in that arcade as a kid, it, it kind of takes you back a little bit. It's a little mm-hmm. more modernized, but the concept is there. So that was kind of like my inspiration behind what four hundred four should kind of be like. All right, so. Um... You know, you mentioned, uh, you know, your partner, you know, initially kind of, you know, stepping out of the scene. So obviously you got to wear, you've been wearing uh, multiple hats and figuring out the business. And you are now, the, you know, the sole owner, the sole, um, you know, operator uh, for, for eSports. You know, think, you know, based off our conversation that we have, um, you let me know, hey, you know, businesses prior to the, uh, you know, the current situation, business was ramping up. Yeah. You were seeing some consistency with your own um, customer base. You know, tell the folks, you know, a little bit around what this current situation with the pandemic and now, you know, seeing some of these um, riots around the George Floyd case, how that has um, changed the situation with your business, if, if it has. Starting with the, the coronavirus, I mean, that that definitely put a... I guess a damper in everybody's plans. I mean, not just mine, but like pretty much every small business went through the same problem. Some of them are still going through it. The plaza I'm in, like the pool hall owner around the the other side of the plaza, like he and I are good friends, but he he can't figure out how to get people in there now. And the reason why is like the the restaurants are all opening back up now. They're closing early though. They used to stay open until, you know, like 10, 11, 12, but now they're all closing at 8 p.m. He opened around the same time I did, so we're both still really new to the plaza. You know, it's, it's a nighttime shop, so he would rely on customers that were there for, like, late-night food to come up. So, you know, he's still trying to get people in there. The SBA loans during the coronavirus, I mean, I don't know anybody who was able to get any. Uh, I talked to all the owners down there in the shop. None of us got anything. From what I understand, like, all those – small business loans went to big businesses so they need to just go ahead and change sba to, to bba or something because none of us <laughs> none of us are getting it. um so you know that didn't come through man i tried applying for the pandemic unemployment assistance i didn't get approved for that because i'm the business owner and the business didn't get approved for it so i couldn't get approved for it filing as both the owner and as the employee so i tried that several different ways didn't go through ppp didn't go through um, so like after, after three and a half months, I could either do nothing and, and just file for bankruptcy or I could just open back up and 
and hopefully people are, you know, itching to, to get out the house and are ready to start getting back to, you know, normal life. Just, just accept like this, the new normal, you know, bring that mask with you, stay clean. I mean, we sanitize the shop up and down before and after, you know, hours of operation, body temperature scans, you know, hand sanitizer station upon entry, um, no cash. It's all like electronic transactions. So, I mean, that's about as, as good as we can control, man. I try to keep it as clean as possible in there and try to make people feel more comfortable. As far as the protests, since we're not actually like downtown Atlanta, and I, I'm, I'm assuming this is probably the case for every every state or every major city, I know the riots are all happening downtown. We're, we're on the outskirts. If you're familiar with Atlanta, there's basically a perimeter. We're like on the outskirts of the Atlanta perimeter. Mm-hmm. We're kind of like nothing really happens. We're, we're actually in what's called Old, Old Koreatown. It's, it's mainly an international village. Uh, we'll get to that later while, while I'm out here, but people really only come out here if they want to get like, you know, a variety of different Asian food or Hispanic food or something like that, or, or go to like, you know, those, those types of businesses. So the, there hadn't really been any much action. I mean, Shambly High School out here, they, they did a protest, but it was, it wasn't anything, <clears throat> you know, crazy. It was just all their students were like, you know, out on the sidewalk holding up something. Mm-hmm. No, I appreciate that. Appreciate that, uh, you know, that, that feedback around the current situation and, you know, one thing that I think that's, you know, great from what you just told me is that, uh, you know, you're leveraging all the tools, right? You tried the SBA, the loan process, obviously you didn't get that. So now it's time for you, right, to kind of roll up your sleeves. Um, and I commend you for that and just making sure your business is as streamlined as, as possible, right? Using all, like you said, the electronic payments, wiping things down. This is a new, this is really the new normal, right, for not just your business, but all, all businesses are going to have to go through some form of this moving forward. So appreciate you just kind of realizing that early and then just put, you know, put your best foot forward. And, and, and it sounds like you're seeing some of the traffic, you know, come back into your location uh, with folks getting yeah. a little bit more acclimated to that, that, that new normal that we all have to live in, at least for, you know, the, at least for right 2020 is what we're saying. We're not sure what, what 2021 will look like. You touched on a little bit around just the area that your your business is currently located in, and you mentioned kind of their their um, other business owners like yourself. It sounded like you you mentioned a minority business owners. So talk a little bit about what what the experience is like um, being in a um, you know a business district where there are other minority businesses, and you know do you think there's some benefits to being in that kind of environment? Yeah, so the, the environment, um, so I'll just start with the plaza. I mean, uh, the, the main, the focal point of the plaza is, is kind of shaped like a, a giant U. Um, so if you're looking on, I guess, the inside ring of the U, the, the very center of it is what's called Super H Mart. And it's, it's an international Korean grocery store. So it's, it's really popular. You know, you got a lot of people that go shop over there if, they, if they're looking for certain foods or, you know, certain brands that they can't get, you know, just going to Kroger or Publix, something like that. And then you got, you know, you got, a, you got a handful of Japanese restaurants on to the right of them. And then to the left of them, you got a handful of other Asian restaurants. Uh, you got like a Laos spot uh, that's kind of like street food. And then you got, you got Conk Heaven, which is like a, uh, it's a Caribbean spot. And then you got um, you got Haru Korean Fried Chicken, which is really it's one of the newer businesses to open up. Uh, you got Miss Gogi, which is a Korean barbecue spot. Going back to the other side, the three Japanese spots. There's a Bubble Tea's place. There's the uh, there's like a Taiwanese dessert spot. There's a couple of those actually. And then on the back side of the U, a lot of those people don't even know we're back there. Lot, the people that come to 404 are mainly just like they found it on Twitter or something like that. Instagram, Facebook. So it's actually kind of weird that the people in Doraville, most of them don't know that 404 is back there, which is something I'm trying to do better of this year. It's like finding a way to, to promote to the actual locals over here. But it's, it's really hard to do for a bunch of reasons. But the area itself is cool because it kind of fits in with the, the gaming culture that we have, especially with the fighting games. You know, a lot of that stuff is based off, you know, like, you know, Japanese culture, Korean culture. Um, so, you know, they, those guys, they love coming out there, being able to go get, like, you know, Korean barbecue if they want to or all kind of Asian food. It kind of just fits in with what we do up there. 
Um, and they can bring it up to the shop if they want to or dine in down there. So it's always a good time. And then if you go down the road, you got Sweet Hut, which is a really popular uh, bubble tea spot. You've got, man, all kind of restaurants, like 24-hour open pho restaurants. Uh, we got everything out here, man. So it's it's just a it's a it's a great spot for gaming to be, I feel like. Um, you got card shop down the road, comics and all that. It's, it's a good time. I think that's cool. You, you pretty much made my mouth water by um... – going through the list of the different food options. Um, I know in Atlanta, the couple of times that I have been, you guys do have quite the selection of great restaurants. So I think yeah, to your absolutely. point, right? Restaurant, food and video games always go together. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> of course. So you, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, just in your general area, uh, there's probably some opportunity from an awareness standpoint um, around 404 Esports. Talk a little bit around, um, you know, how you're staying engaged with your customers, you know, in a normal environment. I know uh, the, the, the current pandemic may have uh, changed some of the ways you interact with your um, clientele, but, you know, how do you go about um, interacting with your customers and building that um, engagement and awareness? I mean, for the most part, just, just staying active all day on, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, I'm always I won't just like post something and be like, Hey, everybody show up to this event. That'd be in the, you know, we got a discord too, which is kind of like an underground gaming app. I actually don't know why it exists, but for whatever reason, it's, it's just like another form of social media that nobody but gamers know about. Uh, but you know, it's cool to have it. So there you, there's like different channels and servers that you can join and access and, you know, people have their own little groups or, I mean, for the most part, it's just like interacting with my friends all day. Uh, so it, it makes the job easy because I kind of have like a personal relationship with everybody. It's not just like I own like a corporate business and, you know, I'm, I'm just like putting stuff out and ignoring everybody. So like, I'm literally, if, if somebody comments something that's not even, you know, I go in there and I'll interact with them. I'll, I'll talk with them and stuff. So, you know, I think that's one of the key things you have to do is just always have a presence, you know, with your, with your um, customer base or your player base. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, the fact that we're all kind of close anyway makes it it's, makes it easy, but it, it's a lot of work. I mean, it, I'm not trying to downplay it or anything. It's it's kind of a lot to, you know, you have to go and make all the events, update the website calendar. You know, you go through, you do all your promotions. And because different websites on social media are configured different, like Twitter, you can only, you have a character count. So what I, what I can get away with saying on Facebook and Instagram, I have to like, figure out ways to shorten it and cut it, but still get the, the main details and points across about whatever event's going on. Cause we have events literally every night of the week, oh, except for, you know, the days that I'm closed Sunday and Monday. So doing that over and over and over repetitively. And then once you make the event, you, you know, you get it posted everywhere, you know, get all the right tags on it. So it's seen by the right potential new people, you know, then you're going in and constantly reminding people because I'm telling you, you can't just, you can't just let the event be out there and, and, and not say anything about it because people will forget to, sh to show up to it. Uh, so you constantly have to be like bugging people, be in their ears like, hey, don't forget, you know, every couple hours. Uh, people are going to ask you questions because it's, it's 2020 and people do not read. So I can put all the information you need to know, which is the same information every week. And I, I get on them. I make fun of them all the time about this. They don't, they don't, so they're not going to care if they hear this and, and they see me say it. But like, you know, people, people are lazy. So I could go on the tournament page and then also on the post, I could say, hey, doors open at 5 p.m. Like we always do. Tournament starts at 8. Like it always does. Cutoff time is going to be at 7.50. And then someone's going to see it and be like, hey, what time does the tournament start? And then mm -hmm. me, you know, I'll, <laughs> me being, <laughs> being like a sarcastic dude I am, and I'll find a gift of somebody like, making a, a disappointed face or something like that. But, you know, I always tell them, like, hey, man, it starts at 8. You know, I need you to start learning how to read, man, because it's been the same time for the past year. Nothing's ever going to change. But, oh, uh, yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much, you know, one of the, the main things that, that keep the business running, man, just the interaction on media pages. You have to be able to do that, like, and consistently and do it well. Uh, like, you definitely have to be seen by your player base. Yeah, and I think it's good that you're committed to it. I don't think you downplayed it at all by saying, look, this is something where, you know, it's constant. And I can even think of, in my experience playing video games, right, when I go on my, my PS4, hopefully soon my PS5, I've been seeing some stuff online about that. But, you know, when you go on your PS4, there's always somebody live streaming. There's always some content out there. 
And to your point, it's just people need to see it front and center. And uh, sometimes you got to spice it up, you know, like you said, with the gifts and things like that. Like you're, you're finding ways to speak the language of your customer base versus sticking to that generic, you know, the, the 100 and whatever some odd characters that Twitter allows you to put into your, into your messaging. You got to get real creative around how you engage with your customer base and putting, you know, just communicating in the format that, that the lingo that they want, that they want to speak. So you're on it. I, I know you're, I think I saw something um, on Twitter yesterday. I think you were like editing some streaming content that you were about to put out, but even just showing them behind the scenes like that, that shows that you're putting in that word um, and peeling back the curtain a little bit so they can be a part of, you know, making the meal, right. They know the recipe. They can, they can see what you put into it. Right. For sure. All right. Um, so, you know, you touched a little bit on, you know, um, a couple things, right? Um, you gave a little bit about your background, you know, where the company is at now. I appreciate you, um, you know, highlighting some of the growth, growth pains that you've been through throughout the pandemic and just the changes in the business model that you've uh, overcome. So, you know, last question I want to ask, and I'm going to kind of flip it over to you. You know, what's next for 404 Esports? Um... The two biggest things that carry 404, you know, just going off last year, are the Tekken World Tour and Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, you know, PR and all that. You know, a lot of the World Tours, Arxies, all, all that stuff, you know, the, the main fighting games, they all have a World Tour that goes on. Grand Blue, for example, was one that really was starting to blow up uh, around February. I think it was... We did our first tournament February 21st, like right when the game dropped. And we had like 60-something people show up for that tournament. And then, you know, early March, Corona happens. And then, you know, people are thinking, oh, it's only going to be a week. Oh, it's only going to be a couple weeks. Oh, it's only going to be this month, and then we'll be back to normal. Three months later, man, all, all the games, all the brands canceled all the world tours for this year. So, I mean, we're all just waiting on that. Year, really, um, in the meantime, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I was able to run a, a check in pool. I found part of the Marvel Con team doing that. Um, and, I mean, I guess I, I do a little work with Red Bull Gaming 2 down here in the uh, – off their Atlanta headquarters. So, they've been helping out, you know, try to put things together, you know, throwing pot bonuses at, at you know, smaller tournaments. And we're, we're talking about doing something – once, like, Corona's officially over, like, throwing, like, a, a really big party at the shop, um, just kind of like a welcome back for all the players type of deal. That's pretty much it. It's really just waiting everything out, and our fate's kind of in the hands of the, I guess, the the publishers of the games. Like, uh, I need to see what, you know, Namco and Bandai is talking about as far as when the Tekken World Tour is going to get started back up or, you know, what's going on with, you know, the Smash Bros, what's going on with all the Arxies games, which include, you know, like Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Fighters, Grand Blue. So we'll see what happens with this. Like Mortal Kombat was a big one. They just got dropped from Evo, uh, which was a really big story. Mm -hmm. and Evo's going to do all their stuff online. You know, all the Masters events that were part of the World Tour, some kind of threw in the white flag. Um, some of the ones that are later in the year, they're still deciding if they're going to be online or they're just going to cancel all together. But even if they do it online, it doesn't count for anything because the world tours are, are no go. So they're really just doing it because, you know, out of people just wanting to do something. Mm -hmm. um, and we all know online play is not as good as offline. all kind of Wi-Fi warriors out there. People playing on lag, uh, raids mm -hmm. putting on you in the middle of matches. So, I mean, there's always going to be problems with it. Thankfully, like, ours actually went kind of smooth when we did Momocon. You know, we'll see what happens with it. Hopefully, sooner than later, uh, we can get back to appreciate the that. schedule. Uh, yeah, appreciate it. You know, appreciate that background. So, you know, people, you know, last thing, um, you know, let people know how they can uh, keep in communication, learn what's uh, new and popping with 404 Esports. You know, if there's anything you want to close us out with, I'll give you that time now as well. All right. Uh, yeah, if anybody wants to, you know, check us out. It's just 404 Esports everywhere. You go to, if you're looking it up, it's number four, letter O, number four. It's not actually at 404. But, yeah, Twitter at 404 Esports, Instagram, Facebook, same thing. Uh, website's 404esports.com. It's pretty much, I guess, the last thing I would say is, I mean, for, I guess, anybody out there wanting to start their own thing, there's all kind of 
crap you got to deal with when you're starting up a business, you're definitely not going to be successful overnight. And I, I went through all kind of growing pains, man. I made, I, I made every possible mistake you could make starting out. And thankfully, like, things started to click, like, right on time. But, like, the first four months were, were horrible. They were a nightmare, man. Like, I was already planning out, like, what I, how I was going to file bankruptcy and everything. It's, it's definitely a lot of work. And don't listen to those motivational speakers on YouTube because those dudes don't have any experience. They're just going to tell you, you know, the most generic stuff. Oh, oh, try hard. Don't give up. Reach your goals. That's not going to help you at all. But... Yeah, man, if anybody's looking to start their own thing, man, just, just stick with it and, and do it by your plan because well, during that time when things were rough, I had a lot of people saying, oh, well, you know what? You need to do this. You need to do that. And the problem, if I had taken that advice, the problem is people don't see the same vision as you. They want you to run your business the way they run theirs. There were a lot of business owners that I was talking to at the time. Um, so, you know, I talked to the guy down the hall. He was like, oh, see, here's what your problem is. You need to, you need to be focusing on, like, these eight-year-olds and such. And, I was, my 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 vision wasn't to to run like a daycare center that happened to have video games and you know what I mean so like it just stuck with it and eventually people started coming and then you know I was able to do what I want to do but that's that's my main thing if you're if you're, you know that applies to anything really just see whatever you're doing do it your way don't let anybody influence you I mean take advice if you want to but people don't see everything through your perspective so your vision they might not see it the way you see it or you might not know how to explain it the right way but Whatever's in your mind, just try to make that happen. And if, if it doesn't work out, at least you can say, hey, I did it my way, though. If it doesn't work out and you did it somebody else's way, then you're going to be looking back saying, man, I should have just stuck with it and seen what happened. So always, always live by yourself, die by yourself. Yeah, I appreciate all this feedback. Um, like you said, you went through this process of learning uh, your business and um, you didn't know everything at first, but you're figuring things out. Um, and, you know, as this economy uh, opens up, you're going to be um, – you know, one of the, the leaders that people are looking at to figure out how to do some of these things, because certain businesses, you know, they did, you know, over this last three, four months, they did, uh, they closed down, right? Um, you know, yeah. just kind of see what the lay of the land is. The spoils, I guess, of, you know, this current situation or, or the, the rewards, uh, um, the treasures are going to go to those who figured out how to grind through um, the current situation that we're in. You know, I appreciate you um, joining and giving this perspective. Thanks for tuning in to the Beyond Normal podcast, everybody. I appreciate you having me, man. Appreciate you all. No problem. Thanks for tuning in to the Beyond Normal podcast. I can be reached by cell phone uh, via call or text at 980-263-9921. I'm interested in connecting with other business owners across different industries and looking forward to the conversation.